In this video, we're going to continue working on our leads application. And if you saw the last video in this series, you'll know that we did some bootstrap work in our last video. We created a service provider and we made a few bindings to the IOC container. Now, I've iterated over that code a little bit now and made a few different changes. Um, I didn't like that in our service provider, we had one method that was parsing the domain name and another one um, that was returning the different lead types. You know, a class should have a single responsibility and these two different methods didn't really have anything to do with each other. So what I've done is I've extracted the code about setting the site name and I've now moved that um, to the top of start.php just below the app instantiation here. And I've changed it up just a little bit. Um, I'm instantiating an empty object right here with new standard class. Then within the switch statement, um, we are basically parsing the domain name. So if our request was to freightform.com, we're just grabbing the first part of that before the period freightform. We're passing that into a switch statement. And then we are setting the ID property of this site object. We're giving our site a name. And then finally, we're binding to the IOC container using the instance method. So with the instance method, you can bind something to the IOC container that's already an instantiated object. So I've just used apt instance here, our key is site, and then we are going to bind um, the site object. So normally when you're making IOC bindings, um, you are, you're binding a class so that um, this class can be you know, resolved in different ways. For example, using a dependency injection into constructors, um, the class can be resolved using the IOC container. But you can also bind um, object instances using this instance method, as I've done right here. After that, because we don't need some global variables uh, floating around our script, I'm just unsetting the site variable right here. However, it is still bound to the IOC container from this previous statement. So if we go over to the lead service provider we worked on in the last video, you'll see that I've just removed that code. And now this lead service provider, it only has to do with leads right now. Um, right now its only job is just getting the lead types. And it's checking the site ID, so we already initialized this. It's checking the, the name of the site. And then based on these cases right here, um, it is going to return uh, the different lead types and that's being set to lead types here. And then we're also binding that um, to the IOC container here. You'll see this app bind, and then we are attaching that right here. So I'm gonna show you how I went about um, designing this, um, how I went about the architecture. And I think this is a really subjective topic. There's a lot of different ways you can go about it. And at the end of the day, you just have to do something that you feel comfortable with because uh, it's your application. So you don't want to be coding out of guilt or you know always thinking, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this, I'm supposed to be doing that. Um, just do something that you're comfortable with. I have something that I'm relatively comfortable with so far, um, but there's also a good chance I could change it in the future or iterate over this code in the future um, if my mind changes. So let's start off by just opening up our routes file. And the way that I'm doing this is actually no matter what the site is and no matter what the lead type is um, I'm going to basically route that through a single single controller and I want to use a re resourceful controller but so far um, I'm only interested in the the index and the store methods so you don't have to implement all of the um, different methods of a resourceful controller you can use only to you know just use a few of them and of course, as your application grows, you can add on uh, more of the uh, RESTful methods here. So let's open up the exchange controller and see what's going on there. Um, we are using dependency injection here. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing, my, I'm bringing in my lead repository. We're injecting that through the constructor, and then that's being set as a protected property of this controller class. Let's open up that lead repository and within the lead repository here, um, it also has its own dependency and it takes a model as a dependency. So it is going to have one of the different eloquent models uh, injected into it. That model property is going to be set in the class 
and that's going to be used within the repository to do different interactions with the database such as getting the leads and getting the headers for the leads. If we go back over to the browser for a second you see the headers are just these table headers right here and we have the leads below them. Let's just open up the view for a second just so you can see um, basically uh, how that's working. Let's make the text a bit bigger and so this table is being output dynamically for each headers as header we output the header and then we need to loop through all the leads so as we do this uh, first loop for each leads as lead we're outputting the table row and then we need to do another nested for loop we need to loop through all of the different attributes of that lead and for each of the different attributes we are going to um, output a table data cell so this leads that's being passed in here is obvi obviously an eloquent collection and each element of the collection is an eloquent model and then you can grab the different attributes off your element model with um, get attributes. So let's talk a little bit about this um, setup that I have here um, in order to grab uh, basically data from our database. Um, let's just talk in terms of the um, FCL page for now. So we, we have our FCL model and um, you know this is referencing a specific table in the database. We have class FCL extending lead model. Um, lead model is nothing special. Basically, um, I've, I've just done a little bit of you know initialization here just to keep the code a little bit drier. We're setting a hidden property and um, we're setting a regarding this ID right here. So this um, this helps protects against mass assignment. And if you want to use um, the create uh, method of eloquent, you'll need to you'll need to do this. But basically, this is just extending eloquent. Normally, in your eloquent models, you'll see this just like eloquent. But actually, eloquent is just an alias um, for what I have at the top here: illuminate database eloquent model. So if you have ever wondered, you know, where the eloquent class is, this is it. It's this model class. So let's just close that up here and within our lead here um, we're setting the table so um, Eloquent knows you know which which table to deal with and then I have two methods in here um, showable fields so um, basically these are the fields that I want to um, you know show on the site they're all the ones that you can see right here there's more um, if I did like select star or something that would grab all of them but there's only particular ones that I want to show and um, I've placed them inside this array right here and then we also need another array for the headers and um, you'll notice these two need to match up so we have date uh, as the first one here and then created at as the first element of showable fields we have the commodity title and then the commodity field in the da database the quantity title and then the quantity field so these, ne these need to match up because remember in our view we are looping through them and obviously we want our headers to match up with the appropriate data. So what I have right here is just a lead repository and if it's past the FCL table model basically we're going to be doing some kind of getting and setting um, with relation to FCL data but we can also you know place our own business logic in here. So the way I view repositories is basically um, a data layer of my application these lead repositories will take a model as one of its dependencies. So a model is basically representing um, one table in the database. Um, it might have some methods on it. I will set um, all of the relationships of my model within here. So for example, um, this model, it belongs to a user. Okay, There was a user that posted it. Um, it might have a one-to-many relationship with a messages table or a quotations table because one uh, you know one lead could have many quotations so I will establish all of those relationships with the model and I will make the model a dependency of the repository and the repository is a nice way to you know uh, organize code and you know to make some basically some getter and setter functions for accessing my data and we can put other kinds of um, you know business logic in here the repository is not necessarily only getting data from the model. It could be consuming data from external sources. 
such as an API. It could be, you know, grabbing some information from my cache. So a repository could have multiple different dependencies, um, but in my case, at least one of them will be the Eloquent model. So let's go over to the controller here. Um, you'll see that gets passed in through the constructor here. And the first thing that I'm doing um, in my index method here is I'm just getting the leads. So if we go over to that get leads function, um, you'll see because that model was injected in here, we can grab those, uh, we can grab that information from the model. I have this model showable fields, and it gets an array of all of the uh, fields that we want to show. And then here we return this model select. We pass in an array of the fields that we want to show. Uh, selecting an array of the fields, we're limiting it to 20 results, and then we're returning a collection. There's nothing special with the get headers function either. You can see we just have this model headers. If I went over to the FCL function here, you can see we're just returning an array of the headers that we want to show in our table. Now, actually achieving a dependency injection for my controller here, it wasn't easy. And the reason why it wasn't easy was because I was unable to, you know, sort of hard code the dependencies in here. Well, I could have done that. We could have, you know, all sorts of different controllers. We could have an FCL exchange controller. Like, let's say we had FCL exchange controller. And then at the top, we can use FCL lead repository. And then inside the lead repository, um, instead of just taking any old model here, you know, we could, basically, we could, we could hard code uh, well, it wouldn't look like this, but we could, let's see now, we could have use FCL, okay, and then we could, they, we would just be passing that in here. So that would be the easiest way to go about that. They would, um, all the dependencies would be hard-coded on the class. Um, but in my case, I didn't want to create a whole bunch of different repositories and a whole bunch of different controllers. I wanted to engineer this in a way that I was just using uh, one repository and one controller just to make things um, a little bit more maintainable and to have less code. So I'm just going to put this back to how it was and I'm not sure you know which way is better if it would have been better to done that way or if it was better to do it the way I did it um, but I think you know at the end of the day you know you just have to do what you feel comfortable with. So the way that I was able to achieve this here um, within my routes file, I've actually um, put a route filter um, on these on these exchange routes here. So before um, we go into the controller here, we're going to we're going to use this before filter right here, and it's a custom filter that I set up, and it's called model.bind. And the reason I called it model.bind is what I want to do is I want to bind um, a particular model. The one I'm going to attach is dependent on this segment one right here. So let's go over to the filters file and I'm just going to go down to the bottom here. This is the filter that I've created. The second argument of the filter function is a closure and within this closure uh, in a before filter the first um, argument is route and the second one is request. So you can uh, use these at any time within your um, filters. So basically this, these are the IOC container bindings. This is the uh, route one and the request and I think with after filters um, there's also a response. So let's see what I'm doing here. Um, I am binding to illuminate database eloquent model. So this is the full path to eloquent. And then the second argument is a closure um, within the closure, I need to pull in this uh, request variable right here. So we can do that using the use keyword, use request. And then now that we have um, this uh, request variable in here now, we can grab the first segment of the URL with the request segment one. And then I'm storing that on model right here. So in our case, um, for example, for bulk, that is just going to be bulk. It's not going to include this uh, slash in front of it. It's just going to be bulk. So we store bulk inside this model variable right here and then finally we return new model. So what we've done right here is we've set a, a binding here. So remember within our lead repository um, it took, uh, I believe, I think we can type in this here. 
it took the model um, as a, a dependency in the constructor right here. So what we've done is we've created uh, we've created an IOC binding here, and the model that is going to be debound that is going to be bound again is dependent on uh, the first segment. What's going to happen here is um, in this constructor function, it needs to instantiate this lead repository object. So in order to do that, it's going to go over to its class here. But in order to instantiate this lead repository um, right here, it also has its own dependencies, and its dependency is the model. So because we set that, um, because we made that binding just now in the filters, um, it's going to be able to resolve this dependency. It's going to be able to instantiate um, this lead repository class, and everything is going to go fine in our controller. So what we're going to get in our controller each time is we're going to get the correct repository each time. So no matter we're dealing with FCL or LCL or if we are um, on a recycling page and we're dealing with metal leads, no matter which one we're dealing with, uh, the correct one is going to be instantiated here. So like I said, this is just one way to go about um, designing this. If you don't want to use that before filter, you could just create uh, basically different controllers for each one. For example, FCL exchange controller. And then within this one, um, you know, you could, you know, of course your controller, it wouldn't need, it wouldn't need to duplicate uh, code all over the place. Like you could create different um, controllers for each of the different lead types. Um, and then they can, this controller can extend an abstract class. You can have that common class functionality within the abstract class. So you could still, you know, uh, be extending here and keeping your code dry, but um, if I went about it this way, I would I would need to create a lot more files. I would need to create a lot more controllers, and um, I would need to create a lot more repositories too. So I've just opted for this method, and so far I'm happy with it. So what I've achieved with this design is basically no matter what the site and no matter what the lead type, um, we are using a single repository for all of them. We're using a single controller, and I'm also using a single view.